The first thing I'm going to do is choose a mold for my form, and it can be any type of form. I'm just looking at this um, plastic party size bowl, and you can see that the bottom of it is smooth. I'm going to be building over the top of it, so a bowl like this that has the sharp rim is not going to work because that will cut into the coils with the construction. So after I have my form chosen, I'm going to cover it in plastic. You can cover it in um, saran wrap or plastic wrap if you want, or you can cover it in a thin plastic bag like a dry cleaning bag, and that's what I'm going to be doing. You want to make sure that you're not building with the coils directly on the plastic or it will stick. So I'm just going to tuck the extra up underneath my bowl and then this is going to give me the surface where I'm going to start my coil design. I've already sketched out an idea for my pattern with the coils. Of course I can deviate from this a little bit but it's good to have a plan going in before you start rolling your coils. So now I'm going to talk about rolling coils out. If you have an extruder, this is a great project to do with an extruder, but if you don't have an extruder, that's not an issue either because coils are fairly easy to roll out. So um, my tips for rolling out coils is to start out with a slab, but it's really hard to roll a rectangular shape. So before I start to roll the coil, I actually just squeeze the clay and get it into sort of a coil shape first and then I will be rolling those out. You can see that that will roll a lot easier than a rectangular type of shape. Now when we roll these out, my recommendation for the, the width of the coil should be about the width of your thumb or um, a larger marker, um, not one of the thin markers, but one of the larger marker or a highlighter because we are going to blend these coils a little bit. We want them to be a little bit on the thicker side, but definitely not this thick. This is a little bit too thick. So um, when I roll the coil, I'm just making sure that I'm pushing that clay the whole way so that that clay can make a whole rotation. And I'm going to be moving my hand from the center out and back to the center again to make sure that I'm getting an even coil rolled out. I've rolled out a bunch of coils and now I'm going to start to build my design on top of my mold. The next thing I'm going to do with these coils still soft is make sure that I am um, blending them. I want to make sure that I'm not pressing down too hard or it will squish out the coil design on the inside, but I'm going to make sure that I'm rubbing the outside of the coils together. I like to use a, the back of a spoon to do this, but you could use a wooden modeling tool or a rib tool to do that as well. So I'm just going to start to smooth those all out until the outside is all completely smooth. After I have a rough blending of all of the coils, I'm then going to go back in and try to just make the surface a little bit smoother on the outside. It's really important that you don't add water in when you're doing this and that you're just use, using the tools um, and pressure to smooth out and blend the outside.
After it's smoothed out, I like to slip and score a coil onto the bottom of it. It will just give it a little bit of a foot and will help the bowl to sit even on the surface in case any of your coils are not blended out completely smooth. So to do that, I'm just going to place the coil in the desired size and shape, and then I'm going to lightly trace around the inside and the outside of the coil so that I know where to um, slip and score, and I'm gonna attach that coil. My next step is to allow this piece to get leather hard. It is really important that you do not leave it on the mold completely uncovered and allow it to dry because the clay will start to shrink on the form and it will uh, break your bowl or break the clay um, as it starts to shrink on your, your plastic or metal form. So uh, make sure that if you can't let it get leather hard um, within one working period that you are loosely covering it with a bag, or if you're going to leave it longer, make sure you completely cover it with a bag um, so that it does not completely dry out while it is still on the plastic form. Now that my piece has had some time to dry, I'm going to remove it from the mold. And to do that, um, you're not going to try to lift the clay off of the plastic bag, but you're going to flip the mold over. And then you will open up the bag and remove the mold and then slowly peel off the plastic bag and now you can see that beautiful pattern on the inside. So this is just going to dry and then be fired and then we'll be glazing it.